Hello, it's Scott Manley here with part 9 of my beginner's playthrough. Okay, so now you're in space in a stable orbit, right? Stable being these values are both bigger than 70. Now it's time to set up your moon trajectory. So I would press F5. Save this. And also you'll notice this thing is losing power here. See this number here, 0 0.02. That means it's actually drawing power. And the reason is, although we have the sun sitting right there, both solar panels are exactly at 90 degrees to it. So, in this case, I'm just going to rotate it to bring the solar panel to face it. There we go. Now we're actually getting power. And I can open up my bay. Sweet, we could do science and everything up here, except that I want to fly the science to the moon and bring back what we can. Okay, so, the moon is here. And we want to fire our engines to get us to the moon. So when you're going to another body, what you do is you click on it and set it as a target. And this means that it'll now give you a bunch of extra information. First of all, it'll show you your ascending and descending node. This is basically where the two orbits cross if they aren't exactly in the same plane. Uh, the second thing well, that you'll see, well, is once we start, once we start planning a trajectory, we'll start to see where we encounter. So, as a rule of thumb, you go 90 degrees from this. So you go to the, the planet curb and then you go 90 degrees away. You do a right angle, create a maneuver node, and then again, you're gonna accelerate forwards. And you see the projected orbit getting higher and higher and higher and higher. And now you see these close approach things. These start to appear when you have them targeted. So I'm gonna bring it up until we get close enough to the moon. So I'm, I guess I'm gonna go up and over the moon. Now, this one is actually gonna impact the moon. I'm gonna throttle just back a little, a little, and there, we got a close approach, moon periaps of 254. Uh, 200, you can adjust these things. And you can try to get super close to the moon and get all the science, or you can try other options. Yeah, let's, uh, let's get within 30 kilometers of the moon. Now you see that passing by the moon has gone and kicked our orbit up. Um, so we've got a 40 second burn, 42 second burn to do. I think we can actually do this. So I'm gonna now point the spacecraft at the blue marker on the nav ball. And the beautiful thing about this is that you'll know when you're about ready to start firing your engines because you will see the moon rise over the horizon. So point that there, and now we gotta wait. So 42 seconds, you wanna split it again, right? You wanna do 21 seconds before, 21 seconds after. So when the node says 21 seconds, that's when we're gonna fire our engines. And there is the moon, just like I told you. Just like I told ya. Okay, and press Z. 100% thrust, don't spare the horses, Jeeves. Home James, don't spare the horses. Okay, and um, see how you've got a time here, 30 seconds? You can also look at your consumption here and figure out how long you've got. So when this hits 20 seconds, you realize you're gonna have 32 units of fuel used to get there. So we're gonna have tons of fuel left here. And that's good because we're gonna need fuel to come back from the moon. And we, we don't have a transmitter on this, we just have uh, we have to return the experiment. So as it gets close, throttle down your engines. This is a very important thing because things become very, very sensitive when you get close here. Things will change very, very quickly and you want your engines to be firing at the minimum level. So there, Moon Periaps is 44 kilometers. Oh, nine kilometers. That's about as close as I dare. You do not want to be below 10 kilometers because things can happen. So that's us, and we're heading off to the moon. So I'm gonna set this, I'm gonna say warp here. And we're immediately gonna warp up. So you can come and watch this as it flies up. And there's the moon there. We've made it, we're in the moon's, moon's sphere of influence. We are now ready to do science on the moon. And yeah, eight kilometers, that's okay because the closest the highest mountains are below that, so you should be fine there. 
If it's inside the moon, you may have to adjust your orbit by firing away from it. And of course, the way you do that is you would set up a maneuver node, add a maneuver right in front of you and then drag this one. That will push you away. You see that will increase your altitude and this will decrease your altitude, right? So with every object, every planet, there are two altitudes, right? There's high space and there's low space. And you can get different science from both sections. So I'm in high space right now. It's worth slightly less than low or slightly less than low space. So you want to get that close approach. I'm going to get my mystery goo science here. And the goo feels right at home. Look, 20 sides. Brilliant. I'm going to do a temperature uh, thing here. 16. I'm going to keep that data as well. And I'm going to leave this materials experiment until we're much, much closer. So let's do that. I'm going to warp here. And again, watch as we flow towards this moon. And we're right above it. Going super, super fast. Oh, no, no, no. Stop, 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 stop. It shot past the moon there. Quick, observe the materials bay before it's too late. Near the moon, keep that. I guess sometimes things go wrong there in hyperbolic orbits. Oh, we're now high over the moon. Darn it. I'm going to re reset that experiment. That was a bit of a bummer. Okay, well, that's a little bit of a setback. I guess we don't trust the... Choose not to trust this uh, warp to again. So let's, uh, let's uh, trust it again. <laughs> let's warp to here and see if it actually works this time. It says T minus three hours. There, okay, brilliant. So now we're out here. We're, we're gonna set our maneuver node to descend back to Kerbin. So you wanna do the descent maneuver as far out as possible because that'll be the most efficient. Oh, oh look, we get another encounter with the moon. We could just try this again. Also note that this one comes around the back of the moon and then gets kicked off to infinity. Um, you know, you can actually do that. You can go out beyond the planet and then come back. You know, look at this one. It's kicking it up into a polar orbit. These are all very interesting, but we're not doing that. We're not going to the moon. We just want to get our periaps down into the atmosphere and no more. 284. There we go. 200. If you go too low, then you run the risk of burning up. Well, 16 is probably too low there. 48 is probably too high. You can trim these things closer to the time. 32... 19. Okay, I think 19 is good. Anyway, while we're out here, I guess we'd better collect that high space science for Kerbin since we haven't been out there. High space for Kerbin starts at uh, 25... Sorry, 2... 250 kilometers. So you can get that early on if you like. And then, oh wait, review data. This is high over the moon. They're both high over the moon, aren't they? Let's just check. This one's high over the moon. Oh, temperature scan. Oh, there, great. Keep the data high over curve in. Great. Well, we've got four hours until this maneuver. So you can use time acceleration to kick it in. Watch the moon zip off around its orbit. Kerbin's days are six hours long. And that includes the movement of the sun. Okay, there. I'm going to do that. Oh, darn. Shot past it. Doesn't matter too much. When you're a long way from the, the planet, it matters less how precise you are. So we're just going to point this at the blue marker. Bingo! and fire the engine. This maneuver says three seconds. I'm not, I'm gonna do it at a lower thrust and you see that it actually takes longer. That's fine. There, look, we're just watching this periaps come down. We wanna make sure it stops coming down before we end up piling into the atmosphere too quickly. Let's throttle back a little more. 200, there, 33. Just trying to get... Yeah, I think that'll be low. So if you go too low, then you burn up. If you go too high, then you don't slow down enough and you come back around. 
Ah, I actually have enough fuel to go to Minmus as well, but we only we've filled up our science. We've got all the original science we need. And before anything, it looks like I should adjust the rotation of the spacecraft here. There, I want to make sure that those solar panels are illuminated because it's unfortunate when you get down to the planet and then realize you have no solar power left. Okay, so now we're going to time accelerate down. Be careful about being too aggressive with your time acceleration downwards. You can sometimes skip through this. I'm going to warp to this and let it happen. Hopefully it won't skip through it. There's Kerbin. And now that's us, 200 and something kilometers up. Beforehand, I should probably close this. And we're heading down, so I want to point the spacecraft retrograde. Which will be... Um, this way. That's my anti-normal. Or sorry, not normal. Radial, anti-radial. There, that is the retrograde vector, you see that? It's like a little circle with an X and these in it. So point your spacecraft along that. And you can either burn up the rest of your fuel or just uh, suffer re-entry, it's up to you. So we're coming down. You could even try re-entering it with it, but that is potentially dangerous because it can cause the whole thing to fail. I am going to... Well, I'm going to quick save, but I think I'm just going to jettison this and then see how the the re-entry works without it. So this, the one problem here, actually, is that the sun is going to be below the horizon. So we are potentially... We're not getting any power at this time. And we could run out of power on the way down. But we do have stability control helping us just a touch. There we go. If you want to turn the horizon to a more natural orientation, just press V. And as we come down, the ablator is working for us. Um, it seems that in recent versions, uh, heat shields are less useful. Uh, however, it's entirely possible that the developers will change this again. In fact, it's highly likely they will change this again. So I'm putting these on just as good practice, right? There, so remember, speed has to get below about 2250 for us to actually slow down sufficiently to get captured. Or to get into orbit, so therefore, if it slows down below 2250, then we are no longer in orbit. And that's good! There we go, we're actually doing a pretty... This is a pretty good re-entry vector here. Our ablation, our stuff's happening. We don't have any thermal warnings or anything yet. Those are little thermometers that appear during the, the new version. However, there is a bug in 1.02 where if those thermometers are displaying, then you are leaking memory and the game will eventually crash. So uh, if, you, if, this, if you're running 1.02, which is pretty much the most recent version, press F10 to disable them if you see them happening. Otherwise, you will find that you have run out of power. So another thing they did with the recent uh, developers change is they stopped parachutes from working safely at you know hypersonic re-entry speed. So now we're going to wait until we get down below you know Mach 1 basically before we open those sh those uh, chutes and we should be fine. There we go. And then I'm going to open the chute at this altitude, disable stability control and we are fine. Just a case of time accelerating until we get to the surface. It's all very dark, but you can you can just about see the silhouette against the stars. There's the materials bay there. You can examine it if you like. I believe there's some reference to Hal there, the little uh, red eye looking back at you. Danger, science stuff, and you can tell it's real science because it's written in Comic Sans, right? Biohazard. Yes. Oh, here we go. We're just above the surface. I'm just using time acceleration to make this happen as quickly as possible. I have no idea where we are relative to the space center either. Recovery of, of spacecraft is more monetarily efficient. You get more money back if you're closer to okay, the Okay, we got 150 recovery. science. We got lots of stuff here. And we got recovery of a vessel from a flyby from the moon. 
And we also completed our... We got some co com, uh, contracts completed. Fly by the moon. Talk about close encounters. Any closer and there'd be paperwork. Yeah, you're right. Ten kilometers. And I think that's about where I'm going to have to leave things. Uh, I may be back, but I don't know. I've got to go to Scotland and I won't have my computer. So until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.